Welcome to another Fear No Fix video. Today we're working on our 2004 Ford F-150 with a 5.4 liter engine. We're going to be replacing the thermostat, which may be a root cause of your P0128 or a P0597 code. Thermostat's a very simple device. It regulates the flow of coolant through your engine, and it's one of the most common causes of overheating. It can also, if it sticks closed, cause your engine never to heat up all the way, which can hurt efficiency. It's very easy to replace. It's also very easy to test, and we'll also show you a little demonstration just to show you how the thermostat works and how you can test out yours to see if it's opening at the right temperature. Let's go. Before we start disconnecting this, we are going to drain a little bit of coolant. We want to get the coolant out of the hose, we want to get the coolant out of the top of the radiator, and just drain it out of the thermostat housing so we don't make a huge mess when we take it off. Before we get started, make sure your engine is completely cool. We're going to release any stored system pressure by very carefully removing the cap from the bottle over here on the driver's side. Before we remove the cap, make sure you have safety glasses on to protect your eyes. Then we're going to take a rag, we're going to cover the cap, and we're going to very slowly remove it, and we're going to listen for any hissing or sounds of releasing pressure. As soon as we hear a little bit of a hiss, then just stop. We're gonna back off and we're gonna wait until we don't hear any more air escaping. All right, now that all the pressure is released, we're gonna go ahead and remove the cap. Even now, we're just gonna be really careful. We're not gonna look directly at it. We're gonna leave the rag in place and we're gonna keep our safety glasses on. All right, and we're just gonna move that aside, leave it a little loose, and this is just so the air can equalize while we're draining the system. We're on the passenger side of the truck now down on the bottom corner of the radiator. You can see the petcock right here. We're gonna open that up to drain the coolant and it's gonna drain out right here. We're gonna take a length of 3 8 inch hose. We're just gonna press it over that and then we're gonna run it down by the frame here and we're gonna run it to a bucket or a drain pan or something under the truck. Hey Jordan, you wanna grab a bucket? If you've got an assistant around, it might be a good idea to get them to hold the hose in place. Ours is a little short and we don't want to go spraying coolant all over the floor. Now we're going to open up the petcock valve. That's this white valve right here. It might be a little tight if it hasn't been opened for a while. If it is tight, you can use a 19 millimeter wrench or socket. You can use an adjustable wrench. You can use just about anything. It shouldn't be too tight, just something to give you a little bit of extra leverage. And then just a couple of turns and it should start flowing. That should be enough. So we'll just close that back up. To get access to the thermostat, we're gonna remove the air inlet ducting. That's one 10 millimeter bolt. Once that's out, we rotate up and pull out of the air box. Now we're gonna remove the hose clamp on the thermostat housing. You can use regular pliers or you can go for some hose clamp pliers, which I think are worth the money, but you don't need them. Now there's still gonna be a little bit of coolant inside the thermostat housing, inside the hose, just everywhere. So I'm just gonna put down a couple of rags to catch it when it comes out. Now we're just gonna grab our hose, twist it, pull it off. And make sure it doesn't pop off, it might splash some coolant up at you. Now we'll remove these two 10 millimeter bolts holding the thermostat housing on. Now we'll remove the thermostat housing. If it's a little seized in place, you can kind of wiggle it around, maybe give it a couple of taps of the hammer right there. Also, obviously there's a little bit of coolant in there, so maybe we'll want to catch some of that. And here is our old thermostat, and we're just going to grab it and wiggle it a little bit to get it out. So before we remove it, 
you want to take note of this pin right here. This allows a little bit of coolant to flow through and we want to make sure that this pin is facing upwards. Also, we're going to note the alignment of it and we'll just put the new thermostat back in the way we found it with that pin kind of facing backwards. And we'll also want to remember that the seal was on top of the thermostat. We're going to head over to the workbench and we'll show you a quick demonstration on how we can test out the thermostat to see if it's still working properly. We can test out the thermostat by putting it in a pot of boiling water. Every thermostat is going to have a very specific temperature where it starts to open. You can probably find this in your owner's manual or maybe a spec sheet will come with the thermostat that you just bought. And at that temperature, for this one it's about 188 Fahrenheit, it'll start to open. One degree below that it should be completely sealed. It'll start to open and then it'll open progressively more and more and more until a second specified temperature when it should be fully open. In the case of this one it's roughly 208. At that temperature it should be open and then all the way and there should be a specific opening as well, maybe about 20 millimeters or so, but it depends on every different thermostat. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna test this out. We're gonna put it in our kettle over here. We're gonna turn it on and you'll see how the thermostat starts to open around 188. So we'll place the thermostat in the kettle. And as the water heats up, the thermostat will start opening around 86 degrees Celsius or 188 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you hit somewhere between 97 and 101 degrees Celsius or 208 and 215 Fahrenheit, the thermostat should be fully open. You can now see right around here, the thermostat is fully open. While it was cold, there was no gap right there. That was completely sealed. That's where your coolant flows through. So this thermostat is actually working properly. So that's how the thermostat works. That's how you can test it out just with some hot water. It's amazing how such a simple mechanical device is so critical to your car. This one tested out fine, but if yours is failing to open or it's not opening all the way, then we'll show you how to put the new one in your truck. And here's our new thermostat. You can see it's slightly different from the one that came out. There's no pin sticking through there. There's almost like a little ball bearing stuck in a cage there that can seal up against it. Uh, we're gonna put it back in the same orientation. Then we're gonna put our o-ring slash seal back in. This surface right here on the thermostat housing seals up against that o-ring right there so that's what keeps the pressure in. But even then we should probably clean up this surface a little bit with some brake clean or metal prep or something like that just to make sure that there's nothing kind of stopping it from seating properly. Thermostat housing goes back in, seal up against that o-ring, line up the bolt holes, all right, now we're reinstalling our two 10 millimeter bolts. Just gonna leave it a little loose so we've got some room to line up this hole. We'll just snug these up a little bit. And now we're gonna torque both to 89 inch pounds or about 7.4 foot pounds. Now we're going to replace our radiator hose. And we'll replace our hose clamp. Remember to leave your hose clamp in a spot where they're easy to access in case you need to take this off in the future. Now we'll replace our inlet ducting. Slide it in on the driver's side slight upwards angle into the airbox and then push down and in. And replace our 10 millimeter bolt. All right, now let's go top up the coolant. Before we start filling up the coolant, we're gonna make absolutely sure that the pet calc is all the way closed. We don't wanna go dumping our new coolant all over the floor. I'm just gonna snug it up a little bit with my 19 millimeter. No torque, just snug.
Now we're gonna fill the coolant degas bottle up to the fill line here. Our bottle was absolutely filthy, so we had to clean it off with some brake cleaner just to be able to see the fill line. And we're using a Ford OEM equivalent coolant. And now we're just gonna lay the cap on top of the degas bottle. We're not gonna tighten it up. Okay, now we're going to start the truck so that we can circulate that coolant around. I'm gonna turn the heater all the way up and to its hottest temperature. That'll circulate the coolant through the heater core as well. Okay, Chris. No new coolant on the floor, so far so good. Let's do it again. Same as last time, no new leaks under the truck. We're gonna take the cap off again. Once again, it was just lying there, but we're gonna be really careful, take no chances, you don't wanna get burned. So got glasses on still, rag over, safe, remove it. Let's top it up again. One more time, Jordan. Still no coolant on the floor. And now this time the coolant line barely moved. It's just at the bottom of the fill line. So I'm gonna tighten this up. We're gonna let the truck sit for a couple hours, let it cool off. We're gonna check one last time for leaks. And then if we need to, we're gonna to top up the bottle a little bit and then we call it good. All right, the truck's running well. It's warming up properly, but it's not warming up too much. So I'd call it a success. If this video helped you, make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of any future videos. And until next time, fear no fix.